uh, dear students i welcome you all today i am going to talk about polen uh, pistil interaction as you all know in flowering plants one of the most important uh, steps in a reproductive process is the pollination in angiosperms there are three categories of or types of style based on the morphological features of the style these are solid style semi solid style and open or hollow style the solid style is mostly found in dicots and is characterized by having a central strand of specialized and elongated cells which constitute the transmitting tissue also called as the conducting tissue the transmitting tissue varies in its in its complexity and may be either single stranded as in withania or multi stranded as in solanum melangena the cells of the transmitting tissue are highly thick walled with intercellular spaces having secretions rich in carbohydrates uh, proteins glycoproteins and some enzymes the hollow style is predominantly uh, found in monocots and consists of a hollow canal which runs throughout the length of the style from stigma to its base a layer of glandular cells surround the stellar canal which secretes some mucilaginous substances into the canal which serve as a nutrition for the growing uh, pollen tube these secretions contain uh, proteins carbohydrates uh, lipids some enzymes such as uh, esterases and acid or phosphatases etc after arriving in the style the pollen tube grow towards the ori through the intercellular spaces of the transmitting tissue where the elongated cells are piled into parallel files this path of the pollen tube was earlier thought to be a mechanical one and determined by the transmitting tissue but now it is known that there are biochemical cues which direct the pollen tube growth through the style during its growth through the style the pollen tubes are in addition with the components of the extra cellular matrix of the transmitting tissue the extra cellular matrix also called as ecm consists of a complex mixture of proteins particularly the arabino galactan proteins proline rich glycoproteins and extensin like proteins the arabino galactan proteins agps are highly glycosylated hydroxy proline rich glycoproteins a class of agps called as transmitting tissue specific proteins have been known as the proteins which play multiple roles such as pollen tube addition pollen tube guidance in the style and also the nutrition of the pollen tube in experimental studies where the levels of tts uh, transmitting tissue specific proteins was reduced the seed set was severely reduced the severity correlating with the degree of down the regulation of tts protein synthesis the reduced tts protein levels resulted in the reduction of uh, pollen tube growth uh, through the transmitting tissue of the pistil the tts proteins show a gradient of glycosylation with their maximum 
glycosylation near the ovarian end of the style. Thus, it is proposed that the pollen tubes grow along this gradient of increased TTS glycosylation in the transmitting tissue. Further, the pollen tubes have been found to deglycosylate TTS proteins uh, releasing sugar molecules which are implicated for their role in pollen tube nutrition and pollen tube growth. There are other proteins of extracellular matrix which are implicated for pollen tube growth such as NATTS, uh, pistol specific extension like proteins also called as PELPS. Precisely speaking, the glycoproteins in the style are believed to provide guidance to the growing pollen tubes. In hollow style of monocots, a cysteine rich addition assay protein with a pectin fraction in the ECM are implicated for pollen tube addition, growth and guidance. Now, we come to the stage why the pollen tube has reached the ovule and now we will see how the pollen tube will enter into the ovule. The pollen tubes after growing through the style uh, reach the ori and find their way into the ovules. The studies of uh, pollen tube growth in many species have provided evidence in support of some chemotropic factors governing the pollen tube guidance. These studies have especially highlighted the role of female gametophyte in pollen uh, tube guidance. The role of embryosax in the pollen tube guidance is clear from the studies on Arabidopsis thaliana where pollen tubes were guided only to those ovules with normal embryo sacs and not to the ovules with degenerated embryo sacs. This clearly uh, suggested that viable embryo sacs provide signals to guide the pollen tube. Studies in peach also have uh, revealed that secretions from both ori and ovules appear to have a role in pollen tube guidance and penetration of the ovule. In the ori, the pollen tubes are guided to the ovules and may enter the ovule through micropyle, calaza or integuments. The entry of pollen tube through micropyle is called as porogamy while as entry through clasa is called as clasogamy and entry through integuments is called as mesogamy. Now we will discuss the entry of pollen tube into the embryo sac. Whatsoever is the mode of entry of the pollen tube into the ovule, the pollen tube always enters the embryo sac through the micropylar end. The pollen tube enters into the filiform apparatus through its apex and grows through it into the synergid. The synergid which receives the pollen tube appears to be predetermined as it starts degenerating well before the arrival of the pollen tube. After arriving in the synergid, the pollen tube ruptures and releases its contents which include two male gametes or sperm cells. These two gametes are involved in the act of double fertilization. They are involved in the fertilization of the egg and secondary nucleus forming zygote and primary endosperm nucleus respectively, which give rise to the embryo and endosperm in the developing seed or ovule.
the pollen and uh, pistil interactions uh, we discussed so far are true of the compatible pollinations which always result in a fertilization and seed set. The angiosperm pistils have evolved mechanisms to uh, discriminate between desirable pollen and undesirable pollen which if allowed to bring about fertilization would have severe and negative effects on the fitness of the progeny. If a pistil uh, with a functional female gamete or gametes fails to set seeds after pollination by viable and fertile pollen grains which can otherwise bring about fertilization in other pistil the two are said to be sexually incompatible. Sexual incompatibility is of two types one interspecific incompatibility and second intraspecific incompatibility. In interspecific incompatibility the pollen grains from other species are outrightly rejected because they are too dissimilar from the recipient species. The interspecific incompatibility is polygenic and is controlled by many genes. The second mechanism is intraspecific incompatibility also called as self incompatibility. Here the pollen which although originates from the donor plant of the same species is rejected because it is too similar because of originating from a genetically same or closely related plant. The self incompatibility in most of the angiosperms is controlled by a single multi allelic S locus with genes encoding a pollen component and a stellar component. The interaction of these S gene uh, pollen and stylar proteins constitutes the recognition and rejection uh, reaction which determines whether pollen is compatible or incompatible. The self incompatibility is generally of two types uh, gametophytic incompatibility and sporophytic incompatibility. In gametophytic incompatibility the incompatibility phenotype is determined by the genotype of the pollen or gametophyte itself while as in sporophytic incompatibility the incompatibility process is controlled or determined by genotype of the sporophytic plant from which the pollen is derived. Let us first talk about the gametophytic incompatibility. In species with gametophytic incompatibility system both compatible and incompatible pollen are allowed to germinate and grow pollen tubes into the style. The growth of the incompatible pollen tubes is however arrested in the style once it reaches one third length of the style. Analysis of stylar proteins involved with the inhibition of the incompatible pollen tube revealed the occurrence of S-linked glycoproteins which have RNAs activity. They are commonly referred to as S-RNAs. The S-RNAs enter into the pollen tube and the interaction with the pollen S protein determines whether to degrade the pollen RNA or not. In incompatible pollen tubes the RNA is degrade, degraded which brings about a cessation of the pollen tube in the style while as in compatible pollen the RNAs are rendered inactive by the activity of the pollen S protein thus allowing a normal pollen tube growth 
through the style to bring about fertilization. Now we come to the sporophytic incompatibility. In sporophytic incompatibility, the stigma is the site of a rejection reaction. Following incompatible pollination, the pollen grains either fail to germinate on the stigma or if germinate, the malformed pollen tubes are unable to penetrate the stigma which develop callous depositions in the stigmatic papillae. The uh, sporophytic incompatibility involves the sporophyte origin pollen coat proteins PCPs such as SCR which interacts with the S stigmatic uh, proteins such as SRK S receptor kinase and SLG S locus uh, glycoprotein. Following pollination the pollen coat containing pollen coat proteins such as SCR flows to form a layer between the pollen and the stigma. If the SCR of pollen and SRK of the recipient stigma are encoded by the same S haplotype, the two are incompatible. In such an interaction between SCR and SRK, the inner domain of SRK phosphorylates the ARC1 within the stigmatic papilla which initiates a cascade of intercellular signaling. This signaling cascade is suggested to ultimately regulate the activity of aquaporins in the stigmatic papillae to limit the availability of water to the incompatible pollen grain, inhibiting its germination and subsequent growth. To conclude, now we know that the pollen pistil interaction is a complex interaction where molecular crosstalk between the male gametophyte and female sporophytic tissue takes place at various levels in the pistil. This interaction governs whether the pollen may be allowed to bring about fertilization inside the ovules or may be inhibited from doing so depending upon the genetic nature of the pollen. Dear students, with this we come to the end of today's lecture. I take your leave and hope to see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.